Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use video files to create realistic looking outdoor scenes like the one you see in front of you right here. You can see we have some fairly decent lighting, we have some uh, hair physics in there as well as some wind. And we're going to be learning how to recreate all this stuff in just a moment uh, when we uh, get started here. Uh, so I'm going to be basically importing in some videos and showing you how you can kind of complement the lighting in your scene to create a more realistic look. Uh, as long, along with uh, image layers and uh, wind and stuff like that. So let's get started. We're going to just start a new project right here. We don't need to save this current one. And the first thing you want to do is go up to render and you want to make sure that your video dimensions are proper. So you want to go to render video and I'm going to choose a frame size of 720p because I normally like to use this format right here and we'll just close that. You can see the background changes. But you may wonder where is, where is the grid? Uh, we can actually press Control G to toggle the grid on and off. This is a really useful uh, tip, especially when you're doing this kind of stuff here. So the next step is we want to find our uh, video files, and I just happen to have some animated backgrounds here as part of our pop video sampler pack that you can uh, pick up from the content store. I'm going to go to landscape here. There's a folder called landscape and animated backgrounds, and there is a spring scroll a dot pop video. Now you can do this with uh, most other video formats as well. Uh, all you need to do is just simply left click and drag it onto your scene and it'll automatically fit onto the background. Now it's important to note here that you want to have the same dimensions for your video file as you do for your uh, uh, output for your video because otherwise it might uh, stretch or squeeze or something like that so uh, you definitely don't want that. So I'm just going to add in a character to my scene. We had uh, Natalie, our character creator character in the previous scene. I'll just double click her to add her to the scene root just to kind of give us an object to adjust the lighting on uh, so we can get the lighting consistent with the background. So there she is. And we can just press F to focus on her. It's not going to change the uh, direction of the background or anything like that. So let's zoom in on her a little bit, something like about uh, that level. And let's apply a quick animation to her. Let's go to uh, Idle over here. And I have the Idle selected from uh, Heidi. This is a uh, uh, embedded uh, file that you can uh, just apply to your character. Simple Idle. And just to give her a bit more uh, personality, a bit more engagement with the audience, let's have her look at the camera as well. So I'm going to select the character and over here in the Modify tab, we'll go all the way down here and select Look At, just choose Look At Camera. And then she'll look at the camera. You can choose the amount of head or eye weight that you want to have your character looking at the camera with. Uh, I'll just go ahead and maybe move her to position like this. And we'll press Control G now to turn off the grid. So now you can see we have our character in front of this uh, background here, this cloudy, stormy sky. And uh, it looks uh, not quite right because the lighting is absolutely different. It's completely different. So let's go ahead and uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to go to my scene tab and we're going to make Natalie temporarily invisible. So I'll press uh, this I button here to uh, make her invisible for now. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to export an image of this background right here. So to do that, I can just go up to render, uh, render image, and we'll just go to frame size, and we will choose the same HD 720, and just go ahead and export that. Let's export to our desktop as a BG1, because we're gonna have another background later on. All right, so we'll just save that, and the image appears right there. So we're going to be using this in an image-based lighting context. So let's go ahead and make Natalie visible here again. And notice we also have two lights here, this key light and this rim light. I'm going to disable both of those for now, and you can see that our character goes completely dark. And that's because we currently have no lights in this scene. So let's go ahead and go to our visual tab now. And in the visual tab, we have an option here under the uh, atmosphere tab. We have an option here for image-based lighting down here. So let's select image-based lighting on, and you can see it uses this default image here, uh, and the, the scene gets a little bit brighter, but obviously we still have a long way to go. Let's go ahead and double-click on this, and let's replace it with the BG1 that we just saved out as a PNG image. Okay, and you can see, notice that uh, it gets a little bit different, but it's still too dark. So what we can do is we can increase the strength, and notice that there's a little bit of... Uh, problem right a problem right here where there's uh, you know sharp edges and stuff like that so we need to increase the level of softness on this slider right here and you can see the result right there now you can also add videos into image based lighting as well however you won't be able to use the softness slider uh, currently uh, that may be changed in the future but uh, at this point right here you're restricted to images which is fine for our intents and purposes so you want you want to soften it too much you want to try and get a little bit of uh, you know shadow uh, right there. 
something like that. Maybe a little bit like this would be okay. So now the lighting is looking a lot more consistent. And we can probably even take down the strength slightly. It's about the level of uh, 90. And I'm also going to, uh, now I'm going to go to my scene tab here and we're going to adjust the lighting. We're going to use this key light here. I'm going to reactivate this key light and I'm going to change the angle to somewhere kind of behind the character. Um, right here. We'll give her sort of like a, a rim lighting uh, about right here. I think that position right there should be okay. Um, now it's looking a bit more realistic. However, the lighting is still too white and it's still too bright as well. So we need to go uh, with our light selected. We need to go over here and change our color. So this is a very pink, uh, kind of pinkish uh, white right now. Let's change it to a more darker uh, blue color. More like a pewter uh, kind of color like this. And you can see the result right there. It matches more with the background. Uh, you can choose a brighter color, but uh, we're going to choose something a bit darker because the uh, the background or the clouds, the blue clouds are, are pretty dark. So we can just do something like that. And then we can also adjust the multiplier. This is the brightness of the light. We change that to like a level of one or something, and that makes it a little bit uh, darker. And then we can uh, you know adjust the lighting here to whichever angle we want. I think this one works over here, works pretty fine. And to top it all off, we can just go to our visual tab again and then move on to the shadow tab. And I like to have a resolution of 2048 for the shadows at least. It doesn't make much of a difference on this scene, but uh, I also like to keep the opacity pretty high in most cases. And bias, in this case, we can probably change it to zero and you can see we get a more accurate uh, shadow, uh, especially on her hair and her shoulder there. And then we'll change the soft shadow from performance to quality. Because we only have one character in the scene, there's nothing really lagging the scene down. So we can pretty much put the shadows up to maximum resolution and we don't have to worry about this. So now you can see we have a fairly accurate looking uh, lighting situation here. I can probably tweak that IBL a little bit to make it a little further down, something like this. Because uh, it's a cloudy overcast day, maybe something like a level of 70 I think would be okay. And you know, tweak the lighting there as well um, to... You know, whatever angle we think the lighting should be at, I think something like this is fine right there. And then we can just go ahead and play back. And now you can see we have this um, fairly accurate lighting and the character just idling and looking at the camera. So, you know, from first glance, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty accurate. And uh, there's one final thing we can do here is we can actually add some hair physics. Since there's uh, very apparently a lot of wind in the background, let's go ahead and select our character. Uh, open up the character here in the scene tab and I'm going to select the character's hair and we have other tutorials that go into more detail on the hair physics but uh, we'll select the hair here and then you can go up here to the physics tab and I'll show you the way to uh, start a simple uh, hair physics reaction using wind settings down here so if we select the hair and press the W hotkey we'll have our gizmo come up if you don't have this gizmo you can also press Control Q uh, to toggle that on and off and notice the direction that the red arrow is going. That is our x-axis, and the green arrow is our y-axis. So if you uh, pay close attention, notice that there's kind of wind blowing from the right of our scene to the left of our scene. This is actually part of the uh, video, believe it or not. So what we're going to do is we want to have uh, wind that's going in the reverse direction of that red arrow, which is the x-axis. So down here, you can see we have wind and local axis. We can just change this uh, value here, x to negative 50, because it's going the opposite direction, so we need to have a negative value right there. And then we can pump up the strength to whatever we want, pump up the gust frequency, uh, strength range, and stuff like that. We go into more details on this stuff in our uh, hair physics tutorial, our wind tutorial, and uh, that's about it. And we can go ahead and now you can see we can add that light, nice little touch of the hair flowing in the wind. And we have our character... Uh, looking at the screen. We probably had some emotion on her, but uh, it's not a tutorial for that kind of stuff. So that's kind of one example of how you can, uh, you know, use wind physics, uh, proper lighting and everything. Let's give another example here. I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, something at the end here. Let's go to new project right now. And I'm going to do the same thing, render, go to render video and change that uh, frame size to 720. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a different video. So let's go back to my uh, um, video folder here. Uh, I'm going to go to my uh, regular video folders, and we have another one here that I've uh, downloaded from the internet. It's uh, just a, a kind of a snow uh, blizzard background. I'm going to click and drag this into the scene, left click and drag it again, and you can see it just uh, applies to our screen. 
and we're going to add in a different character. Let's go to our uh, actors here. And this time I'm going to add in a character from our stylized character morphs. Uh, let's add this Davos character by simply just double clicking him. He's sort of a, a demon looking character. And let's give him another, uh, let's give him an idol as well. We're not going, we're not getting too creative with the motions here. Uh, let's find Chuck. There we go. Chuck. We're not Chuck. We'll use uh, Mason's here. Mason's idol. And go ahead and apply that. And we'll zoom in on our character a little bit closer. Right there. Want to have something like this. Our character's looking off into the distance in uh, the middle of a blizzard. You can press Control G to take off that grid. And uh, you can see, obviously, the lighting needs a little bit of fixing. So let's do the exact same thing we did before. Make our boy Davos invisible. We will go to Render, Render Image, and export the frame size at 720. Yeah, we'll call it BG2. And there we go. It pops up, and we'll go ahead and close our render now. And into the Visual tab, IBL on. Double click this and add BG2. And we'll pump up the strength there to a good value right now. And let's make Davos visible again. And you can see that's a uh, very bright um, because there's a lot of white uh, on this IBL right here. You can see it's very, very bright. Uh, and let's take off those other lights for now just to kind of see the original. There we go. So something like this I think would be okay. Uh, we don't want it to be too, the softness to be too low. I think something like this would be fine. So again, IBL is kind of like your atmospheric lighting. Uh, it doesn't really cast any shadows. It's just your base lighting that you can use to, uh, you can use other types of light to complement the base that the IBL lays down. Um, so I'm going to go to add my key light here again. This time we can, uh, we'll just kind of use the same camera angle. Uh, you can use the forward slash key, by the way, to bring this up. I'm not sure if uh, I mentioned that before. And we'll just kind of use the same similar angle, or we can even do something like this. Um, I think this angle is looking okay right now. See, there's uh, sun coming from over this direction. We also want to use kind of a colder color as well. So I'm going to use something like a very uh, cold blue color right here. And you can notice that changes uh, quite significantly. Maybe take that down to like a value of uh, 0 0.8 maybe. Um, I think that's looking a bit more accurate. Um, we probably could use uh, the strength a bit down. I think, although it's kind of tricky when you have pure white snow to kind of determine how much lightness should be on the screen here. Um, and let's go to the shadows again. Shadows, we can do the same thing. Uh, we can change that opacity, the bias, and everything like that. Um, I normally suggest using these settings if you don't have any lag issues um, for your shadows. And this is looking okay. Um, now what we can do here is it looks a little bit strange because our character is kind of, uh, there's a lot of snow going on in the background and there's really no snow in front of our character. So obviously we want to create a more three-dimensional uh, type of look. And in order to do that, we have to create an image layer on top of our character uh, with actually actual snow coming in front of the character. And the way we can do that, let's go back to the video tab here. I believe we have this in front of a video right here. Let's just double click it and check it out. Um, that's a kind of a, a snow video. Uh, this one right here, background 08. It's kind of like a sparkly video. Uh, this particles one I think is the one that we're looking for. Yeah, this one's a bit more uh, like a blizzard type look right here. So this particles video, I'm going to right click and drag this video onto our screen. And make sure you don't right click and drag it onto anything. Make sure you just right click and drag it onto the background there. And then select image layer. So this is going to create a uh, the video on top of our screen. We can stretch it out to the entire dimension of the uh, of our export uh, um, dimensions here, and we have this snow right here. So that's not really doing much for us. I mean, it, it is in front of the the uh, devil or ogre or whatever he is, but we need to actually make this uh, semi-transparent. And to do that, we need to add a mask video. Now, fortunately. With videos that are predominantly white and black, you can actually use the same video on your image layer or whatever uh, whatever video you have, and you can use that as an opacity, uh, import that to your opacity channel as well. So if I have my image layer selected, which I currently do, and I go over to materials, notice there's a diffuse, an opacity, and a glow slot. 
Uh, let's go back to our uh, videos right here. And what I want you to do is simply click and drag that uh, same video. I'm going to click and drag it onto the opacity channel right there. And you can notice that uh, you know, we can see our demon again and everything kind of changes. And now you can see we have sort of these uh, particles in front of him. So let's go ahead and play that back and see what it looks like now. So that looks a lot better. You can see um, it looks like there's actual snow, um, you know, going in front of our character. And the background um, has the snow as well. And the lighting looks fairly decent. So that's really all there is to it, guys. I just kind of wanted to show you the uh, way that you can create sort of realistic outdoor scenes by adjusting the, the, the character's lighting, or the scene lighting, rather. Um, you know, uh, let me take the strength down a little bit there. Um, adjusting the lighting in your scene, uh, adding stuff like uh, wind physics to characters with hair, uh, using image layers on top, of your, uh, on top of your scene, and everything like that. And you can get pretty decent results like this uh, in iClone. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, make sure you check out the old forums over at forum.realism.